it is Tanya Thrifty Treasures and today I'm super excited to be introducing you to Yvonne Flipping Easy the Midlife Hustle. So Yvonne is already a very well established YouTuber but she creates awesome content. She knows a whole lot about clothes and I really wanted to make sure you guys knew about her. She's a really great friend. I love her to death and I think that you guys are going to love her too. Let's meet her now. Hi reseller friends. It's Yvonne on Tanya's channel. I'm so excited. I have known Tanya for about four or five years. Well, known of Tanya through the Facebook groups and you know various YouTube channels, shows that she was on. And I got to know her a lot better about a year and a half ago when I joined the panel of the resellers. She is everything everyone says she is. She is a sweetheart, but not a pushover. She really knows a lot of stuff about reselling. Well, she's been on eBay for such a long time, a lot longer than a lot of us. And Deb likes to call her the eBay ninja. And uh, we joke about this because Tanya will find the most oddball thing in the corner of a garage sale or back behind the shelf at a thrift store. She will find the most oddball item. And sell it for 50 to 100 dollars when we're like what how did you know and to do something on tanya's channel i was trying to think of something a little different because well i do my own videos and i'm on the reseller stew and um sometimes i guest panel on other people's um shows so i was like well what can i do that's a little bit different um so i did think of something i thought i would go back through some of my more interesting sales because since Tanya's always selling stuff that's so off the wall, I thought, well, let me see if I can like even get close to being in her lane. Okay. So I thought, well, I'll go through some of the more interesting sales I've had in the past and we can talk about, um, but this is the rest of the room. So I have, um, a three piece softbox light set. I chose the square softbox because the umbrellas, that's just more points, right? For me to hurt myself. <laughs> so I chose the um the soft boxes and I've got a three three piece set so I could do like the key lighting setup when I want to. There's my boom there. Anyways, there is my shipping station with my tissue paper, my various polys, the bread basket, um I mean bread plastic bags that most of us use from Walmart, 10 inches by 12, 100 of them for about $2.88 here in Colorado. My scale with the external reader, that was just about 20 bucks. Some lint rollers, my freebie eBay stuff, some shipping stuff that I scrounge around out of dumpster diving. I'll talk about that sometime. My steamer, I did a lot of research. I chose the Shark Steamer from Walmart for just under $50. It is very comparable to a lot of the two and $300 um, steamers, professional steamers that I had when I had retail stores, brick and mortar retail stores. It's so my shipping station, my thank you stickers, my eBay stickers, my new laptop, um, my map. And I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a bunch of pins. Every time I sell something international, I put a pin in it. And so that's just a lot of fun for me. Just some odds and ends supplies. I might go over sometime in another video. Anyways, this on Tanya's channel. Okay, there we go. So anyways, let's get started. So first thing we got to do is put our Tanya hat on if we're going to be on Tanya's channel, right? Okay. Okay. So a lot of the sales, um, I had to go back a few years and you know, on eBay, it only goes back, what, 90 days. And we can look at some items, I think from back as far as 2015, but the pictures and the information is not always together, you know? So, um, I made a picture slideshow that we can talk about, and when I can, I can show you some eBay proof to back it up, but I think you all trust me. Um, what I did is, this is my Pinterest, yeah, I'm still doing Pinterest, I don't know, a lot of people aren't, but I'm still rocking Pinterest, 
and um, I've been doing this for a long time. And so a lot of the pictures I was able to go back through, it was like a, a time capsule or a photo album. I was able to go back through and um, see a lot of things that I had sold over the years. And it's kind of fascinating. So there's another good reason right there to do Pinterest. Um, it kind of keeps it for you offline or not offline, but off your computer. So um, I utilized um, some of that as well, but we will start with the slideshow that I put together. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, let me move me around a little. I hope this is working. I don't know where to put me. I'm new at this. I just got Screencast-O-Matic. This is my first time trying the picture and picture, the webcam and screenshot together. So I hope I'm doing it right. Um, oh my gosh. This was years ago. I was so excited. I found this little pair of vintage glasses for $1.99. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm thinking, oh, look at this. I'm going to sell these. They think these aren't worth anything. And I was so excited. They're like gold-filled frames and all that. You guys won't believe what I did. I learned a lesson as a newbie. Again, this was years ago, okay? So I took all these pictures. I did all this research, and I'm like, whoops. I'm like, okay, so... um. Vintage sunglasses are probably worth about $12.99 or so, this shape. Well, I didn't take the consideration in the gold filled, right? Someone bought them, and he was after he bought them, of course. He's like, hey, I just want the frames. Pop everything off, stick it in an envelope. Well, that's when, duh, that's when it hit me. Okay, he's doing it for scrap. He left me great feedback, of course. He loved it. He got a great deal. <laughs> so anyways, lesson learned. Um, sometimes things are worth more intact, especially if they're vintage or highly sought after or iconic, but sometimes they're worth more in the scrap. So you just don't know. I so I'm known for going through the scarf section and, um, this is one of the more unique scarves that I found. It was just polyester vintage, but it had like real mink tails on it. It was really pretty. This was years ago. Oh my gosh. I think I got about 30 or $40 for that. This was an interesting piece. This was really soft velvet. It was the kind of velvet that's soft all the ways that you touch it. Not the cheap stuff, the real luxe, okay? This looked like um, it was homemade. Okay, I don't really want to say homemade. More um, like a art school or fashion school project. I mean, it wasn't 100% polished, but it had some characteristics of someone who kind of knew what they were doing. Um, I got about $80 for that. It, I think I paid like four or five ninety nine. It was in the um, lingerie rack with the pajamas and whatnot. There, I wish I could show you up close, but it had kind of like um, marcasite, kind of like that grayish, shiny, um, stones on it. And I got about $80 for that. This was years ago. Look at my background. This is when I first started out. I'm just hanging it on, on the top of a curio cabinet. You know how it is when you first start out <laughs> and you acquire things as you can. Okay. These next few pictures, these are German and European games and they're very popular. If you see these, even if it's not intact, you can still get pretty good money for selling the parts. The Catan series. I've actually played these games. Um, they're fun. They are fun. Um, so Settlers of Catan, there's a whole series of it. Those are worth about 40 or 50. This was a huge one that I got. This was actually mine that I got from a boyfriend, so I sold it. I got $80 for it because it was one of the out-of-print games. Um, so any of these Catan, Catan um, series games um, imported European, German, um, 50, 40, 80 and up uh, for these. So that's just a good thing to look for. This was a unique thing. Um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, it escapes me what these are for. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I did do preparation for this. I totally forgot what these are for. Um, ceremonial cap for some kind of religious order. Darn it, this is the women's, the women's division. Anyways, it was like $3.99. I think I got $60 for it. This was years ago. It took a little bit of research, and I waited for the right person. 
but um, they have these made, specially made, to commemorate different levels as they go through the, I think like, I guess American Legion or something like that, but it's a religious organization. Okay, those were loosely defined. Okay, sorry, this has been years on that. But when you see oddball things like this, um, sometimes they're worth a lot of money. Okay, this was recent, but I want to throw this in there. This is old school from the 90s, cross colors. You won't find a lot of them, but um, I got 90 some dollars for this, and this was just a couple months ago. I just wanted to throw that one in there. Years ago, um, this is an embroidered long jacket. I got about $60 for it. It wasn't a high-end label or anything like that, but um, just really nicely embroidered. These are still doing great. Um, they cover boho, Coachella, festivals. They cover um, their old rocker hippie girls like myself, um, even some uptown urban chic, which is a category I like to use. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a great name. I have sold these in great names, though. I've sold um, Etro, which is high dollar, and I've sold Johnny Was. This one here, even being not a great name, but it was just lovely embroidered, was six, I got $60. I think about $5.99. It's a goodwill. This was years ago, but it's still a good flip. Um, I've sold a couple of these. I notice other people in the community have as well. This is a German maker, H&K Sculptures. They're metal sculptures. I think Tanya sold one of these too recently. I got about $40 for this, and it's just wine holders and different characters. Um, luckily, mine was new with tags, but when you see these, if it's cer certain manufacturers will bring more money. This is a German one, H&K Sculptures. Okay, this one here. Um, let me see if I the next picture. Okay, yes. Okay. This is a, I can't say it, sack case. Okay, there it is, you guys. Print text, vintage. This is what I found out. This is why I always look at the doll section. I'm not into dolls, but this doll was about a foot and a half tall, and she stood out because, let me go back, of these blue eyes. Just, I wish I could find the rest of my pictures. The listing's already gone, as you see from this picture. Um, the pictures won't load. But this is being, let me move, that's me, Mao Hai Sin. Um, it used to be Talent Trade, but I switched it. But still, this was um, a few years ago, let's see, 2015. I got $168 for it in shipping. So you might want to educate yourself on these. You won't find a lot of them, but when you do, you'll kind of know it's something special. She has a plastic face, but it was these kind of glass-like phantom eyes. Um, people that collect them are very, very serious, okay? So there it is again. Some information to do your own research. Lululemon. I do well with Lululemon. This was an interesting piece. This was a collab to um, for a special promotion. Lululemon will often have special campaigns and promotions and collabs with other, like, workout companies or exercise people and so especially during the grand opening of a new lululemon store that's probably what this was i couldn't find a lot on it i think i got 40 oh darn i think i got about 40 or 48 dollars for this cap and the person that wanted it it was a guy he wanted to know a lot about it and i just couldn't you know i told him what i just told you guys the best i could but he really wanted it and i got just over 40 dollars for that lululemon hat of course this is their symbol the uh, omega so speaking of lululemon this was a few years ago um i got 250 dollars for this the reason i want to talk about it is handle your lululemon very carefully Take the time to go over to the girls with their websites or their Facebook groups um, where they document everything that Lululemon does. Oh my gosh, you can get help on the exact style name, the year, the color of the fabric. So on this one, I thought I had it. On this one, I found out it was called um, the Get Up and Go, and it was Spring Has Sprung. The Get Up and Go was the style. Spring Has Sprung was this floral pattern. Um, it's getting even harder and harder to find. So I got $250 for this jacket. 
this was about two years ago. I just recently sold another nice Lululemon jacket for $150. The reason I'm talking about this so much is um, it just seems like prices on clothing is really coming down lately and on some things it just shouldn't some people the quick flippers i guess i don't know what's happening they're just um selling some things too impatiently and just the price is going down or maybe it's just that it's we're finding more of it finally trickling into the thrift stores now that lululemon has been in business for a significant amount of time it could just be as, something as innocent as that the supply and demand is shifting but check your Lululemon is why I'm focusing on this because some pieces are unicorns like in the LuLaRoe. They're unicorns. They're like sought after print. They were very limited editions, okay? This was one of them. There are still a few pieces for sale and you can see the high price on it. And the one I just sold about a month and a half ago, I got 180. It was like a camo print. So some pieces will get you a lot of money if you wait for the right person. Um, I wanted to talk about this. This was a few years ago. I always check the health and beauty bags, you know, the big grab bags at thrift stores, because in it are, will be some epic things. I have found some bath and body work out of print or out of production perfumes that I've sold for $40 and $50. This here, hang on, I've got a way to, I actually did find this. It is right there. This was in 2015, $101. I actually did find that. I went back to my eBay. This is from 2015, which is as far back as eBay would let me go. And I was just kind of looking at some of my stuff. Um, I used to really sell things. I was working and going to school. So when I did go thrifting and to work on my eBay, I was super, super picky, right? Just really, I didn't have a lot of time. So I just stuck to the high end items. As you can see, look at these sale prices and some of these things I sold. Um, good money. Ray Spooner um, bathrobe. That was something unique. Those are hard to run across, but there you go. The bathrobe section, you know, who would think to look for Ray Spooner in the bathrobe section? But there it was and $73. Let me see, what else was interesting in here? There was something else, a oh, Reed and Barton. Every once in a while, you'll run across a Reed and Barton that is um, a little bit higher quality um, and a good price. Some of it's just like silver plate. I wanted to talk about this, oh, Fox Moto jackets. Those are always good. But this right here, this was the Met, Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art, MMA. It was just a one-off candlestick, but it looked kind of unique. I took a chance on it. I think I paid like six or seven dollars for it. I just took a chance. And I got $59.61 for it. Okay, anyways, let's go back. So this was $101 from this little makeup grab bag that was still in new shape that was inside of a health and beauty bag that I probably paid, I don't know, five, six, seven dollars for at a thrift store. Um, this is, I talk about this all the time. If you watch me, you probably already see me brag about this. I can't help it. L Vintage Lisa Frank towel. I paid $2.99 in a local Goodwill a few years ago and I got $175. That's the one that I was having a cow over. My boyfriend actually had to say push the accept offer button because <laughs> I just wanted to keep it. See, this is the true vintage, the capital L, capital F. A beach towel. So now I can never, like, I always have to look at the linen section too because I have found some good pieces of fabric, like brocade or good upholstery fabric or vintage fabric that I've sold for a good amount. And then, of course, there's this beach towel. So now I have to take a peek at the linen department. This was interesting. Um, I've sold a lot of unique jackets, NASA racing jackets. I just sent a racing jacket out the other day. It was someone I hadn't heard of, Rossi Valentino. I'm not in the racing life anymore. Rossi Valentino, but he was a thing. He is a thing. So I think I got about 40 or 50 for that. That just went out. And I usually pay anywhere from $4.99 to $7.99. Hi, baby. Highways home from its walk. Hi, baby. Um, this was National Association of Letter Carriers. And I think I got about 40, 45 for that. Gosh, it's been years. But there, that's this is all that was embroidered on it. Nothing else was special. I don't know why I sold this. 
why didn't I keep that? A Nike eBay collab. I, I don't, I couldn't find what I sold it for. It was just in my pictures and or on my Pinterest, but I was just like, did I really sell that and <laughs> give it away? Probably shouldn't have, right? I just threw that in there for fun. This was one of my first um, Velvet Burnout fringe kimonos. I got $80 for it. I always buy these. The better the quality, there are some cheaper knockoffs, but the better the quality, the more money you're going to get. And you'll know the difference by the fringe, the quality of the fringe mainly. Um, I, oh my gosh, I have tracked people down in thrift stores and offered to buy it from them before they buy it. <laughs> when I've seen that I've missed out by seconds and some lady has one in her hand, I have tried that several times to um to like snipe it before they even <laughs> check out with it but they're always so beautiful and luxe i've never had any luck doing that but i always kick myself i'm like you know to go look through the blazers and jackets first this was interesting this i only got about seven or eight dollars for this but i just wanted to throw it in it was a little tiny i mean like maybe four by four inch aqua blue ashtray that someone had crafted all these little glitter and shells on it but i just it was one of those things you guys know i always talk about my artistic temperament there's some things i'm just not going to leave behind so it was just so beautiful that nice shade of blue almost tiffany blue um it just felt so cozy and beach like and the person that bought it they loved it they said they had just he wrote back he had just redecorated it was the perfect colors they loved the beach it went perfect it's so crazy they just redecorated and there he was all excited about this little seven or eight dollar ashtray that he bought for me off ebay so that's a heartwarming story this was gosh i think 2011 even maybe 2010. okay I do have one jewelry success, and it's this here. This was part of an estate. Um, Hannah, my daughter, inherited um, a bunch of things, and this was one of them. And for helping her with all of the heavy things and getting things sold, she gave me this. I picked this out. I just thought it was pretty vintage. I had no idea about jewelry or the value. I just thought, oh, I might wear that someday just for fun. It's vintage. And I just threw it in my jewelry box. Well, a couple years later, I got to looking at it and I did, went ahead and did some research. It is an Ed Lee. Let me see, where is that? I thought I had it. It is an Ed Lee. Sorry, you guys, I don't know. I'm still more on this. Okay, Ed Lee, E-D-L-E-E -E of New York, about from the 50s. I got $350 for this, $350. Oh my gosh, like I was kind of scared to even how to send it, you know. I don't like to sell that high dollar things um, on eBay. I'm not that comfortable even yet in 2017. I'm still a little nervous about high dollar things. But it was a bracelet necklace and earrings okay well i guess that's the last one i wanted to end with a little jewelry piece to, to kind of remind myself that i can do jewelry too <laughs> this was like just a you know luck box that fell in my lap but okay you guys well i hope that this was an interesting um, ideal or topic to do for Tanya's channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So again, this is my Pinterest where I found some of the great items that I used to, that I've sold in the past. These are some of the boards that I have. And some of these boards are collabs with other people um, that I met on Facebook where we do a collab to help promote each other. So most of these are my boards exactly, but some of them are collabs. That's my wedding private wedding planning <laughs> and I think I've got a poker one and some body paint um, okay well thanks I hope you guys enjoyed that I think that was kind of fun so thank you Tanya for having me on your show bye resellers I hope you have good sales I hope that you guys enjoyed meeting Yvonne 
I got to say, Yvonne, I love the Tanya hat. It was adorable and so appropriate, right? <laughs> I also really liked um, the map that you have in your workroom where you can pin um, your international sales. I think that's a really neat and fun thing to do. Um, also enjoyed all of your sales. You had some really good sales. And I hope that all of you enjoyed uh, watching Yvonne's video as well. It is my hope that all of you will go and subscribe to her channel. I'm also going to include all of her social media links in the description box down below. So until next time, we will see you later. Bye, guys.